Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to The Integrated Entrepreneur. I'm here with my co-host, Keith. Keith, what's going on, big dog? What's going on, pal? Hey, we were just talking about legacy, right? What is your legacy really prior before we started the show? Yep. And um, I got to say, I think that our most important job on this planet is what we leave behind. So the people, what the parents, right? Your biggest job, the biggest thing that you could add to this planet is bringing in good children into, you know, into the world, right? And what does that entail? Making sure they're physically fit, making sure they're educated, smart, ambitious, hardworking, okay? Making sure they're good people with good intentions. These are all things that I got to say, like, you you can't pick anything else that's more important, right? That's how you're going to leave a lasting legacy, right? And especially for us operators, right? Who is going to take over when you are done, when you want to retire? You know, I mean, I'll tell you one of the things that I always think about, I don't want my kids to feel like they need to operate this business. I, I tell them that even at an early age, nine and six, I tell them, you guys do what makes you happy. Just be a good person about it, right? You don't have to go through all the stress and all the stuff I did. This is what I'm good at. This is what I enjoy. This is my mission on this planet. It might not be your mission. Right. And Keith, what do you, what's your thoughts on that? Now I'm going to stir the pot. I'm going to make sure that they're really good politically, foundationally. No, I'm kidding. Let's not go there. We should go there. What we I'm should kidding. go there. But. Uh, yeah, so I think a lot of people get wrapped around the axle on this legacy thing, and they fucking immediately go to money. Right. Like, oh, my God, life insurance and legacy and how much money and trusts and all this bullshit. And they skip the kids and they skip teaching your kids valuable lessons about how to how to keep money. They yeah. skip teaching your kids how not to be little shitheads and doing bad shit and being lazy. And they go right to the money. Well, guess what? You can save all the money in the world and you can buy a cheap ass life insurance policy that will leave your family billions of dollars if you want. Uh, but if your kids don't have a lick of sense, then it's all for nothing. Yeah. And it's going to be spent at your local strip club and your local cocaine dealer uh, before your bones rot in the ground. Right. So I'm on board with kind of where you start, which is my mission is to make sure that both my daughters don't have to deal with the shit I dealt with. Yep. And they have a better foot forward. They have better opportunities than I did. And that isn't a dig on the opportunities that I was given. The hands that I dealt, I made the most of. It took yep. longer, right? There was no like shortcut, but the finances should be the shortcut. The money yep. that I'm able to leave behind should be the shortcut for them. It shouldn't be the, here's how you're going to be carried the rest of your life. Yep. With that, in order for that to be reality, to your point, you have to teach them responsibilities, rules, consequences. That doesn't mean you have to beat your kid's ass. That shit didn't work on me. I'm certainly not going to whip my children uh, because they're two little delicate women, uh, you know, and I raised them that way, not to be fighters. But they also need to know that you can't be an idiot. And if you make a bad decision, you're, you're going to suffer mm -hmm. and at whatever level of suffering that's going to require for you to say, well, this was a dumb idea. I should not do this again. That's, that is the world that I live in. And it's yeah. a constant battle and no one, you know, being a parent's probably everyone said this and it's cliche as fuck, but the hardest job in the world because you never really know, you know, am I doing a good job? I mean, dude, this, this conversation comes timely. This morning on the way to the gym, I had this like quick guilt trip. Like, man, did did I did I do well as a dad when my children were really young? And did did the shit that I did back then to them have an effect? And is it going to cause? And I don't know where the fuck that feeling came from, but yeah, it came over me. And, and it happens from time to time where I just like get in my head real quick and I'm like, am I being the best dad? And it's like a moment of checking in with me. Am yep. I doing the things that I should be doing on a daily basis to put these kids in the best position? And it's never like, it's not always great. You know, I travel my ass off. Like I'm leaving in the morning, you know, eight o'clock in the morning. 
and I won't be home until Saturday. And then I leave again the following Tuesday. And I never took the time to ask my oldest. She's 13. Like, do you care if I, when I leave town? Cause you know, she's always on her phone talking to her friends. So I never really check in with her like that, but she's like, yeah, sometimes. And I was like, Oh fuck. Yeah. Not sure why I haven't asked her that before. And I've been traveling for two years now, three years, yeah. like consistently. Yeah. So to your point, yeah, I mean, legacy isn't money. But it's knowing that we we leave kids behind that can carry uh, the torch mm-hmm. and not let this world go any further into the shithole that it's gone into the last five years. 100%. 100%. I'll tell you what I've done in terms of education because I we both – I think everyone can agree for the most part the schools are not getting it done. I don't care if it's public, private. For the most part, they're not getting it done. It's trash. Yeah. And so learning and teaching, especially at a young age, you have to make it fun. So on a, on a lower end and lower scale that I think anybody could go pick up, it's probably the coolest game I've ever played with the kids. That's a board game. It's called the cash flow game. And by the way, they make a kid's version. Robert Kiyosaki makes it. There's a kid's version. There's an adult version. Believe it or not, the adult version is 10 times better and kids can understand it. So don't just skip the kids version and explain the principles that are in the adult version. And I can guarantee you most adults need to play this because the shit I see, they don't, they don't have it figured out. Okay. You guys don't have a grasp on it. Bro, um, stop. You know, Dave Ramsey's got me covered, bro. Yeah, right. <laughs> covered. Um, yeah. So... That's a great way. But one of the other things that I'm, I'm doing and I'm documenting and I'm really proud of <clears throat> is for Christmas, I bought my son, my oldest, a 3D printer. It is a real 3D printer. It's expensive. It's one of the better ones out there. And I'm teaching him to run a business. And so we're documenting, hey, print out a bunch. So now I got him a picture box to take the physical pictures of the product so he can post it. Right. And I showed him how to take inventory of his materials and I'm teaching him every step of the way. And every time I come home before I even get in the door, dad, what are we doing now? What are we doing now? I'm enrolling him and walking him through the process. And he's learning more now than most people will learn from here till college, yeah. okay? even after college. Why? Because I'm doing it together with him. It's a bonding thing and we're making it fun. Yeah. All right. So that, that's the education piece. you got to find what lights your kids up, pour into that, and then bring in education and, and practicality to it. All right? And I'm not saying I'm the perfect dad because, Keith, I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to echo your sentiments. I never know if I'm doing a good job. And there are t- most of the times I feel like I'm failing. I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like I'm failing. I hate If you look at the amount of time I work versus the amount of time I spend with my kids, it's tough. And I think every operator, if you're being honest with yourself, you have felt like that or you've had those feelings. Mm -hmm. And what I have intentionally done is try to become more present. Number one, when I'm there, put my phone away. And then two, I make sure they know why daddy travels, why daddy does what he does, and that I am trying to help people and what the mission is. Because right. they, then they understand why I'm doing all this. And it's not because I want to be away from them and I want to work. It's because I want to provide for them and I want to help others. Yeah. Right? And that's important to get to consistently hammer on that message. So they know, your spouse knows, and you guys actually have a family unit. Here's one other thing. Keith and, and I are always into personal development, right? I can't tell you, I don't know that many people that actually go in and deep to a deep dive of personal development. And it usually stops there. The goal should be bring what you're learning into your family. So we just did yearly goals for my company. Why wouldn't I do that with my family? Why wouldn't I do that with my kids? Okay. These are all things that you should be doing. Keith, what are some of the things that you've uh, done that could help? Some of those Nothing. That's the problem is I, I'm in the, I'm in the same boat as, you know, Hey, I, I know we need to do it. Then, and then busy, right. And then shit yeah. happened. We haven't done it. Kids are busy with volleyball, travel, this, that, you know, my youngest is in 
whatever the fuck they even call it, Boy Scouts of America for girls. I don't yeah. know, right? It's like universal now. Um, Is it but really? It's bad. Yeah, I don't okay. even know. I, I called it Girl Scouts and got chastised, and I'm like, but this is Girl Scouts. They're like, no, this is Boy Scouts of America. I said, this is a bunch of girls. This is Girl Scouts. And the lady was like, no, sir, you're going to have to walk out of the room. <laughs> so, no. Yeah, they didn't like that. Uh, <laughs> you know, I try to check in with them. You know, and my youngest is still all about me. So, like, every night it's I lay her down in bed and I lay with her to go back and we just yep. chat and do that still. My oldest could care less about that at this moment. Mm -hmm. It's too cool. Um, but it's just checking in with her where I can. Mm -hmm. It's a weird age of like not being overly in interviewing her and asking her a bunch of questions because she feels like I'm intruding. Yeah. So that's like, that's one of those weird emotional heartstrings of like, she doesn't need me anymore. I'm killing any boy that comes around, period. <laughs> right? Uh, but it's not about the boys. It's just she, she's got her little friends. She's getting her independence about her. Yeah. Uh, but I think everyone, even myself included, I think, you know, given the position that we're in, you still have to admit that when, when you're not living up to the standard, you could be. And it's a consistent battle, right? It's never going to be perfect, but you have to uh, attempt, you know, and, and we, my, my dad got my oldest, the same, a 3D printer. You know, it's four foot tall. It's 150 pounds. It's huge. So I'll call you so you can teach me how to hook this bitch up because that is not my uh, specialty. Um, okay. But to your point, we've got that in, the, in our shirt press and all these things. Hey, um, that you can that they're getting into this method of like, I want to make iPhone cases and print laminate on the top and sell them. And, you know, they're all about money. They're just all about my money. And so I'm trying to transition that to like, hey, here's how you make money. You know, yeah. the chore method doesn't work anymore. They're like, I'm not doing the dishes, no. not folding clothes, you know, whatever. But making that exciting to them, teaching them effort, right? Input versus output. Yeah. If you're putting in the effort, the fruits of the labor could be your Xbox Series X you want. Yeah. And I'll match you, right? Dollar for dollar. Let's build something. Get them excited. And then I think everyone listening to this, you know, whether it's four people or three million people, you get kids excited about something, their imagination goes through the roof. Like in wild directions. Shit that I'm like, where did that even come from? And yeah. whose house did you get that out of? Because it wasn't around here. We don't even talk like that. Yeah. But it's funny to see just how how loose that they can get with their mentality and their yeah. thought process. And I'm like, shit, if, if we were the operators and we had that same visionary, which we do in a sense, but we're still relatively captured, right? We, yeah. we kind of put a, a ceiling on it. Mm -hmm. If we went wild, right. Just think about it. like, look at, uh, uh, what's his name? The skateboarding guy, uh, Rob Dyrdek. Yeah. That dude, his vision is out of this universe. But if you listen to him, the dude's well ahead of his time, right? And just the way his, he's methodical about his world, time blocking and all that crazy shit. These kids, man, they can go do amazing things, but they're not going to do shit if we fail them on the front end yeah, and don't educate them. You know, because right. to your point, dude, the school system is fucking trash. It's a continuation oh. of bullshit that they're just... Mm -hmm. Like, I like history and I'm all for history, but do what do I give a shit who ate the first apple fucking got the first bullet out of the like the no. shit they're teaching has zero relevance to what our children are going to face. Yeah. Right. None. George Washington's death is not going to give them a, a decision tool to move forward in this world. No. It just ain't going to fucking happen. No. And I'll argue that shit till till fucking I die. Yeah. You know, I've gotten into some heated discussions with people who are like, it's important for these kids to know that. I said, how the fuck so? Prove <laughs> yeah, right? me. yeah. It, I mean, their bank accounts change. Do their tax brackets change because of this? Do they know how to operate a business because George Washington died on a horse? Like, no, none of that shit matters. Now, the presidency and all that shit, important to understand your government. 
even though the government don't give a shit about nothing right now. Yeah. Right. But whether voting counts or doesn't count or, you know, my, my dead grandmother's grandmother's grandmother voted 47 times for Biden in the last election. Like who fucking really knows what's happening anymore? Yeah. School system ain't helping. No, definitely not. Just, here's the thing. After the education piece, I think they need to learn habits and drive, right? And so one of the things that Ed's always said is things are caught, not taught. And I, I actually have proof to back that up. Because when I started 75 Hard when it first came out, my son would actually see me waking up early, working out outside, doing, you know, all the things that I had to do, the reading, the working out. And all of a sudden, this little five or six year old that he was six at the time, probably was like, Hey, I want to do that with you. Okay, cool. He's been working out in the morning every single day since he started seeing me do it. And now he'll go on runs with me. You know, he's nine and we're going, we, we just did three miles this, uh, this weekend. Right. So he's learning the habits. And how does he learning the habits? Because he saw me doing it. Now, if you're a parent and you say, hey, do X, Y and Z and your kids never see you doing it, they know you're full of shit. Like, how are you <laughs> going to tell your kids to do great in sports? How are you going to tell your kids to be physically fit? How are you going to tell your kids to work your ass off if you're fat and broke and out of shape? Right. Yep. How are you going to tell them you shouldn't speak? and say certain things if they hear you saying it, right? Yeah. And I'll tell you this, my kids, my kids have a very foul mouth and they use every word in perfect context. And you know what? I'm okay with it because if that's the worst thing that they do, but they have all these good habits and they're educated and they work hard, you know what? Yeah, that's not the worst, worst thing I've ever You're seen. You're from New York and it's a rite of passage. Your kids are <laughs> supposed to be able to cuss anyone out as long as they do it in correct form. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, I agree. You know, and I think it's sad that you, know, you, you got, you got, dude, and we, and I see it too. Like, yeah. we'll be at volleyball and you have the 295, 310 pound fat ass dad. Mm -hmm. Now he's hanging out the bottom of his fucking shirt, bitching at his kid because his kid ain't hustling. <laughs> and I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I look at my wife, I'm like, can I, can I say something? Like, <laughs> ready to go off of this guy like when's the yeah. last time you did a sit-up hustler yeah. like yeah. i mean put the fucking food down yeah to your point your the kids are smarter than we fucking give them credit for right and they're analyzing everything and they're making judgment calls based on appearance and i'm good with that if someone looks lazy smells lazy because they ain't washed would you go into business with them? No. no. My kids don't even want to associate with them, much less anything else. So I know I'm setting that standard well to, to not disassociate with those people, but don't park your energy and effort into those people expecting to get that same energy and effort back because it's never going to happen. No. Right? I think these kids, you know, based on technology that we didn't have growing up, based on a lot of things, they're growing up in a much different era. Yeah. Where they have the capacity their IQs, their decision-making capabilities, their information collecting is 10 million times quicker than it was for us. Yes. You know, and, and so with that, it's a complete transition of learning that you and I don't understand. So that mm -hmm. creates some animosity and aggravation, right? Because I'm like, I don't ever see you doing homework. Where the fuck are your school books? They're like, yeah, I did that shit in school on a computer. It's done. I got 100. It is what it is. I'm going to play with my friends. I'm like, I don't, does not compute with me, right? Because yeah. I used to do in school and then coming home for four hours and having more fucking score to do. Mm -hmm. I never really did it, but I remember being told to go do it, right? Yeah. The school system is bullshit. Now, and I don't say that to piss off teachers and, and God bless them for what they're doing, but the system itself is fucked. Yeah. Right. Even even private schools that you're paying 15 to 20 bands a year to get into. They There's don't a even stand for a pledge anymore. No. Nah, well, they do it. My at my they do it ours around here. Do they? Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but the curriculum's the curriculum. Right. Yeah. So yeah. the standardized standards, who the fuck's making them? 
a bunch of political shithead people who are always looking out for their well-being and and you know who's going to pay us the most for saying yes to this thing yeah right and that's the problem that we like like getting well ahead of the conversation but that's really where it reverse engineers into where we're at today yeah right so i am pro school i could care less if they're homeschooled or not our circumstance doesn't provide for that opportunity mm-hmm. so they're going to do the best they can but i'm hoping that neither of them want to go to college and i can teach them or they can go learn a trade yeah and become successful and be entrepreneurs at whatever they're doing as long as they can provide for themselves they can run their own company i've left my legacy yeah right i don't want you working for someone else that's the biggest thing that i'm trying to teach them and whether it happens or not they're gonna they're gonna have those experiences and, and educational points to run off of and hopefully uh you know they make the best of it yep. but i'm also leaving a fuck ton of money behind just in case right because <laughs> there there's that piece too yeah so i mean you see- thing on it. you're right and i've seen it I've seen it because I've dealt with father and son entrepreneurs, right? Father built a great business. All of a sudden he hands it off to the kid. I see it because I was helping the dad and then I see what the son did and the son drives it into the, into the dirt. Why? Because the background wasn't there. The education wasn't there. The drive wasn't there. Okay. And it starts in the early years, right? That's why I think playing sports, like this might come off awful and I, I'm okay with that. Every every kid should have to be on some sort of team sport so they learn to work with others and they learn what winning is about. Now I understand that the partici- participation trophies and all that bullshit, it's unavoidable. However, if you educate them and say, hey, like my kid will never have a participation trophy ever on his shelf. If he wins, he gets a trophy. If he doesn't win, there's no trophy. That's how life is, okay? You know, if I don't close, if I don't do what I need to do at work, I don't get paid. That's the bottom line. Right. That's life. Why are you giving them different standards when they're kids? Okay. Because you're automatically giving them bad habits and bad, I guess, references about how the world's going to work when they have Just to go. Just their expectations. Yeah. Right. You're, you're giving them shitty expectations of how the real world is. And then they get that first jab to the jaw piece. And they're like, oh, what was that? Well, that's yeah. called life. And then you get an uppercut. You're like, what the fuck was that? Where's my trophy? Oh, no. No, no, that's called a bill. You got to pay that. <laughs> like, you know, and, and that's the problem is like, I've even heard some kids, friends of mine have children who are 16, 17, and 18. And there's some who are like, no, the world's just going to take care of me. I'm a little gypsy and I'm like, okay, that's perfect. You're not ever going to stress out, but you're also going to eat ramen noodles the rest of your life. Congratulations. Yeah. Right. Then I have one, you know, one of my friend's sons is just turned 17 two days ago. And he was at my house yesterday. He's like, Hey, uh, let me cut all them trees. Let me clear this thing out. Like being proactive. And I was like, sure, you got a job. You know, he cuts my heart every two weeks. He was pulling, you know, I, I posted about this kid, you know, months back, but he started a lawn care company towing this shit out of a fucking Honda Civic. Really? On a fucking oh, pull on a trailer. And now he's got a Dodge 1500, beautiful truck. He's got a badass trailer, great equipment. And this was six months difference. That's right. Awesome. So it's like, that's a pure example of, of a kid who has been taught the right thing by dad. Yeah. Right. It's like. The world's yours. You gotta go get it. The shit ain't gonna come to you. Yeah. Right. And then you got the other one who's like, "Oh, the world will provide for you, little Richard. It's okay." Yeah. And little Richard's gonna grow up just to be a kumbaya, peaceful guy. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Uh, but little Richard won't be successful. No. Yeah. You know, monetarily. And I don't give a fuck. There's a lot of people out there that say money isn't everything. Well, money fucking helps me help other people. Yeah. So money is a lot. Yeah. Money's not everything, but I help more people than you do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we can, I got receipts for that. Yeah. And that's the thing that a lot of people miss. Teach my kids that money is a tool to help other people. Money is not a tool to spoil yourself. Now, will you spoil yourself? Yes. 
I spoil myself to death. It's a because I work my ass off. Yeah. But this didn't come until after I helped a lot of fucking people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so that's my biggest push is like, I want my kids to, to learn to respect money and I want them to then give money away to help other people. And if I can win those two things, then they, they'll have plenty of money to do both. Yeah. Right. I'm still sick of going to teach that because they don't teach shit on finance. No. Right until you're in college. Uh, the streets ain't going to teach them that shit. Because they're going to blow it up in cocaine and strippers. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. We're the last line of defense. And if we fail, they're fucked. Yep. I mean, I'll be dead, but and I won't care at that point. But I want my kids to grow up in a society that isn't completely derailed. Yeah. Which we're trending towards. So it's all for nothing. Uh, I don't think so. I think if the right people, if everyone gets involved... And the next generation is raised to, to a higher standard, which, listen, I'm going to tell you, is going to become less frequent and less frequent, right? So, no, I'm being serious. There, there's a time, right? So I personally feel if you look at inflation, you look at, you know, what it cost our parents to buy a house versus what they were making and then us, that gap keeps widening, okay? So what that means is you're going to have either fucking stellar you know, let's say top 10% people that are going to keep riding that wave up, or you're going to have a very large poor group. And I would roll over in my grave if my kids ever ended up there because I didn't give them the right tools. Okay. Cause that would be on me. Right now. I'm not saying I have to go leave them $20 million. Okay. That's sure. certainly fucking the goal. I'm telling you right now. However, on the flip side, that 20 million, like you said earlier, means nothing if they don't know how to how to actually respect it and utilize it. So this thing where, first off, anything that is not good, when your kids do not have good intent, when they lie, those are things that need to be corrected immediately, right? Those are the bad habits that you're trying to weed out. But you want to make sure they're, in that, they're going to be in that elite group. And why? Because you have all the time, right? No matter how old your kid is, let's say that you got a 15 year old. Well, you still got a good 10 year window where you can get to them and it matters. If your kid's five, you got a 25 year window. Okay. And you have to do that because no one else is going to do it. And honestly, it's no one else's fucking job. Okay. It's your job. You brought the kids on this planet. You got to give them the tools to be successful. I will say this my mom killed it, literally killed herself. Okay, well, not literally, but worked herself to death, but gave us all the tools. Okay, looking back, that I am forever grateful for everything she did. And I didn't even realize what she did when she was doing it and how impressive it was. Right. Okay, she taught me about money, right? She gave me the concepts and then I learned on it on my own. So when it was time for me to build, I just picked up the fucking shovel, grabbed the hammer, let's go to work. And, you know, a couple of years later, this is what I built. Okay. You got to give your kids the tools. You got to give them the confidence. You got to show them the habits. Okay. And you know what? That I'll tell you the coolest thing now. I see some of my son's friends coming around because they think I'm the cool dad, you know, because I got the cool truck. I'm, you know, I'm in shape. I do everything I can. Like I get to take my kids to the bus stop once or twice every week. Okay. Uh, the other days, my wife does it. When I go to that bus stop, it's fucking animal house. It's on. We're playing football. We got all his friends. And I'm like a big kid with all the other kids. But you know what? If I tell them something when they're at my house because I built that relationship with my son and his little friend group, you know they're going to do it. And it holds more weight. Why? Because the kids know I care about them and I'm invested into them. Right? I try to teach them. I try to... I try to play sports with them. I try to get involved. We need to get involved more. Yeah. Uh, involvement's key. And the first thing people get out of because yeah. of all the bullshit excuses that they tell themselves. There, some people don't have a choice. I get it. There's some people who are fucking making ends meet the best they can. 
and this isn't about you. Yeah. Kudos to those who are hustling their ass off to make shit happen. Yeah. I don't want this to come off as like, fuck you, you can make it make it a reality. There are right. some people who wish to God they could have the time with their kids, but they can't because they're working two to three jobs to make sure their kids eat. Yeah. And for those people, I, I got admiration and all the respect in the world. For the people who have a decision and blatantly fucking refuse to, to make it better, yeah, fuck you. That those people are who we're talking about. Yeah. Here's the thing. It's never going to be important until you make it important. And it's never going to happen until you make the plan execute. How, how you do it is up to you. Take my scenario. I got one kid in middle school, other kid in still like in elementary. They go to school at two different times. Mm-hmm. Wife takes the oldest. I take the youngest every fucking day to school. Yeah. I had to get up earlier, go to the gym earlier, come home earlier to get her up out of bed every morning. I wake her up. I get her in the shower. I do all of that. Breakfast, get her ready. Yep. That's our, this is our bonding years. Next yeah. year, she's in middle school. I can't, right? Because mm-hmm. just it just doesn't work. I can't go to work at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yep. My daughter, my oldest, will be in high school next year, which is fucking crazy to even say because I feel like <laughs> we just brought her home. Yeah. Uh, but now she'll be at school. She's got to be there at like seven in the morning. So now I'm going to have to get up earlier to rinse and repeat the cycle with her. But that gives me four years with her. And then my youngest will be there in two years. So then I'll have both for their final two years of high school and we'll rock with it. Right. Those are my years where I can push the installation of core values and checking in with them mentally. Like, my kids skip school all the fuck time. Why? Because I'm like, yo, you're having a bad head day. Like, stay home. It's not important. School is not that important. Your mental health is. Right? So I'm okay with them skipping 40 days a year or whatever if their grades are still passing. I also am getting over this, like, you have to have straight A's and B's. Like, that shit's for the fucking birds. Get C's. Get past it. When's the last time you used fucking algebra? Uh, eighth grade. Yeah. Yeah. When's the last time you really did common core math or whatever the fuck they're teaching these days? I can't even do. I'm a number whiz. It just doesn't make sense to me because it's not how we were taught. Right. So, you know, like I tell them, like, understand the basics, get past the damn school. Let's pass your grades. I still get caught up sometimes like fucking you have a D. Holy shit. You're grounded. You're dead. No, get that shit up to a C so you don't have to repeat this shit. Yeah. Because you're you're not necessarily going to use this ever again unless you become an engineer, which neither one of your asses are going to do. Like, it just is what it is. Yeah. So going back to make whatever you can do. Five minutes, you know, if five minutes is more than you used to do, start with five minutes. Yeah. Make a plan and instill, try to instill just being a good human. Don't worry about the rest of the shit. They'll figure that out in college or in high school and, and they'll find their path. As long as they find their path and they're good humans, that's all I give a fuck about. Yep. Right. And they know how not to blow money. Two things. That's it. Be a good human and learn money. If you can do those two things, you'll survive this world just fine. You'll have a great life. The rest of it will take care of itself. Yep. Or join politics and become a loony tick and, you know, do whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I, I love it. I mean, listen, guys, to wrap this up, pour into your kids, all right? They're going to see what you do. They're going to watch what you do, and they're going to emulate what you do. So they're not stupid. They understand way more than you think they do. I promise you that. Make sure you're making it count, all right? Because that's how – that's truly – that's the legacy I want to leave behind, all right? That's, that's the truth. And I'm going to tell you guys, share this, please. Please share this with someone who needs, needs to hear it. And we will share this with all those shitty parents you know. What? They want to hear this. I said, yeah. share this with all those shitty parents you know. They want to hear this. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> send, send it to every shit. You know what? Even better. Send it to every shitty and every great parent and don't That's tell them perfect. which one they are. And yeah. they're going to sit there for a week. That's actually even worse if you just said that than if you I said, hey, you should... I, I was called to send this to you. I don't know if you're great or shit, but you're going to figure it out on your own. (laughs) (laughs) Please, guys, do that because that that will be in someone's head for a very long time. But it will make them 
look and self-reflect and make those changes. And if that just happens with one person, this show was a success. And if you get sucker punched, we didn't tell you to share this. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> or, or duck. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. We'll see you on the next one. See you.